Welcome to our learning program, Lady to Learn, produced by Rwanda Education Board with support from UNICEF in collaboration with Inspire, Educate, and Empower Rwanda. My name is Teacher Jen, your teacher of Geography Senior 3. I know that you are at home and that you have been doing some chores to help your parents. It is good to support your parents at home. Before we start our lesson, I'm going to teach you a song. Are you ready to sing with me? I will sing, then you will repeat after me. Ready? Good. I start. I'm alive awake, let enthusiastic. I'm alive awake, let enthusiastic. I'm alive awake, let. I love awake, let. I love awake, let enthusiastic. Let's try to sing together. Ready? I'm a love awake, let enthusiastic. I'm a love awake, let enthusiastic. I'm a love awake, let. I love awake, let. I love awake, let enthusiastic. Thank you, dear students. Your voices are very nice. I like it. Dear students. Let's start by reviewing what we learned in the previous lesson. Think about it, write it, then share with your parents or your siblings. Great! We saw population distribution and factors responsible for low or high population distribution. We also saw how to calculate population density. In today's lesson, we will discuss factors responsible for population distribution in Africa. You can refer to the student's book, page 118 to 120. To start, I have a question for you. Are you ready? Look around your community at home. Which area of your community has more people or settlement and which one does not? Outline at least four reasons why the area you mentioned has more people than other surrounding areas. Think about it and write it on your notebook. Fantastic! Cities, Imidugudu, commercial centers have more people, while swamps, forests, Steep slopes don't. Soils, infrastructure development, relief, economic activities are some of the factors influencing population distribution. Population distribution refers to the way people are spread out on the land. In this case, we find some places are inhabited by very many people Others by few, and yet others may have no people living there. We will see it as we are learning. On the other hand, population density refers to the concentration of people per unit of land. The density figures assume that people are evenly distributed and over the land area even in those places where people do not live in swamps, river valleys, steep slopes, and forested areas. You listen? Also, among factors influencing population distributed you have listed, some are physical, while others are human. Before we see the different types of Factors influencing population distributed you have listed. Let's listen to a short message. In the next part, you will listen to a short passage on both human and physical factors that influence population distribution. I have some questions I will ask you. Then as you listen to the passage, you will find the answers. My question is this one. Identify physical factors and human factors mentioned in the passage. Ready? 
great. In any country, the distribution of the population is influenced by both physical and human factors. Among such factors are relief, climate, soils, drainage, and vegetation. Those parts of Africa that have cool and wet climate and those with fertile volcanic or alluvial soils have dense population. This explains why the cool highlands of East Africa and the Nile Valley are among the most densely populated parts of the continent. On the other hand, such factors as urbanization and industrialization led to clusters of population in some areas such as Johannesburg in South Africa and Cairo in Egypt. The less productive desert areas have very low population. Now, from the passage, can you answer my questions? Physical factors, human factors mentioned in the passage. Great, you are good students. Can you clap for yourself? Two claps. Yes. The physical factors include relief, drainage, climate, soils and vegetation. The human factors are industrialization and urbanization. Apart from those mentioned in our passage, other human factors include personal preferences, political and government policies, infrastructure development, security, historical events, among others. Thank you, students. Now, I want us to take a further look at how the factors mentioned actually affect population distribution. We will start with physical factors, and I will ask you to use examples and explain briefly how the following factors influence population distribution in Africa. Remember, we have physical factors, including relief, climate, drainage, soils, and vegetation. Try to find out examples and explain briefly how they influence population distribution in Africa. Yes, let's start with relief. Very steep slopes are avoided because of possible very steep slopes are avoided because of possible landslides. They are also difficult to cultivate. For example, look at the steep slopes of Gachenye and Rurindo in Rwanda. These are areas with steep slopes, very difficult to cultivate. High altitude areas are not habited because they are very cold and unsuitable for crop growing and settlement. Think of the volcanoes. They are very cold and unsuitable for crop growing and settlement. Wild gentle slopes, wild gentle slopes attract large populations and some flat areas have large numbers of people settled on them Others are avoided because they are prone to floodings. After relief, we have climate. Areas receiving high rainfall attract people to settle and do farming, while those with scanty or no rainfall have very few or no population at all. Places that experience extreme temperature means they are very hot or very cold, are not attractive for living in, while warm to cool areas are preferred for settlement. For example, arid areas such as Karahari or Sahara deserts have sparse population due to high temperatures and little rainfall. We have seen so far 
deal with climate, then we are on drainage. How does drainage affect population distribution? Where drained soils are suitable for settlements and agriculture, poorly drained areas such as swamps are unsuitable because of water lodging and the presence of disease vectors. Areas in river valleys close to rivers are avoided. Look at Nyabarongo and Akajera swamps. These areas will discourage human settlement and so have sparse population. The next one is soils. Areas with fertile and well-drained soils attract a lot of settlement because they are agriculturally productive. That is why slopes of volcanic mountains such as Kilimanjaro, Kenya, and Rwanda highlands have very many people, while areas with infertile soils are unsuitable for agriculture and will attract very few people, mainly nomads. Do you know the meaning of nomads? Let's take an example of Maasai people. They spend their life moving from one place to another, looking for grasses for their cattle, looking for fruits. This would be called nomad people. The last one is vegetation. Within densely forested areas, there are few or no inhabitants, while some woodlands such as Miombo, Miombo is in Tanzania, are infested with tsetse flyers and therefore an unattractive for settlement. Another example we can take, like Akajera National Park of Rwanda, this area is not settled because also these tsetse flyers are there. However, grasslands, which are easier to clear, attract many people. We have seen soil, vegetation, drainage, climate, and relief. Thank you, students, because you are following. The next activity, I want you to use relevant examples to explain how the following human factors influence population distribution in Africa. Take your pens or pencils and notebooks and note it down. We have urbanization, economic activities, political and government policies, and historical events. I repeat, urbanization, economic activities, political and government policies, and historical events. Think and write. Great. As you have said, urbanization is one of the human factors influencing population distribution. Because it's normal, many people tend to be attracted to towns and cities like Chigari, Nairobi, Lagos, and Cairo due to high chances of employment opportunities and modern lifestyle. That is normal. Also, we have different economic activities. For example, large tracts of land that are owned by individuals or companies for agriculture are usually less habited because they are used for plantation farming. They are also other extensive areas that are set aside for conservation of wildlife, like national parks. These two remain without people. In such situations, very many people may concentrate on the much smaller areas that are available for settlement. Other economic activities that attract many settlements include mining, tourism. Take an example of Musanze, that is a touristic area which will attract very many people to settle in. 
trade, industrialization, infrastructure development, among others. We have also political and government policies. Political unrest in many parts of the world causes people to move and settle in other parts of a country or even in foreign countries. This reduced population in parts of a country while increasing the numbers in other parts. Take an example of wars and other conflicts. Also, settlement policies. For example, the Umudugudu system in Rwanda or the township system in South Africa encourage some areas to be densely populated while reserving land for agriculture use. We have also historical events like slave trade, colonization, that have also contributed to large numbers of people to move out the land to deserved areas. Other human factors include personal preferences, security, and others. Dear students, can you stand up? We are going to stretch our bodies. Are you ready? Arms up, left leg, right leg, stretch your toes, stretch your fingers, sit down. Thank you very much, dear students. Now, as we come to the end of our lesson, I would ask to make a few highlights as we summarize. Thank you very much, dear students. Now, as we come to the end of our lesson, I would like us to make a few highlights as we summarize. One, population distribution has to do with how people are spread in a given area. It can be dense, medium, or sparse. Two, population distribution in Africa is affected by both physical and human factors. Three, among physical factors, we have relief, climate, soils, vegetation, and drainage. While some of the human factors affecting population distribution include industrialization, urbanization, and government policies. And now, I will give you an exit ticket. You can use internet, books, you can use your notebooks, and search on the population pyramid of Rwanda and answer the following questions. Are you ready to write? Question number one. What type of population pyramid does Rwanda have? What type of population pyramid does Rwanda have? Second question. Why has the population pyramid of Rwanda got such a structure? The third question. Discuss the factors explaining the low percentage of people after 40 years and come up with possible solutions to increase life expectancy. Discuss the factors explaining the low percentage of people after 40 years and come up with possible solutions to increase life expectancy. Now that brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you will join us again for our next lesson. See you soon.